Now let's let's start tonight's Hollywood Palace with one of the most dynamic personalities that I know. Ladies and gentlemen, she and her husband are very dear friends of mine, and we work together all the time. I would like to have a nice big hand for Mrs. Xavier Cougat, Charo. Introducing the French fried potato crisp. It's kind of like the best part of the French fry, which is the taste of the fry, and the best part of the potato chip, the crunch. Now, if your mouth likes the French fried potato crisp, you will too. So, without any further ado, Here's Dave Madden. Well, thank you very much, Sammy. Only I, I wish you'd have said something about my being a sole cousin, at least. I, I feel a little like the only one on the show with a natural lack of rhythm. Oh, well, very nice to be here. This, this is kind of a return engagement for me at the Hollywood Palace. 
I was here this afternoon for rehearsals. <laughs> Well, actually, I wasn't supposed to be here at all tonight. They had hired sort of an exotic-looking belly dancer supposed to jump out of a big nine-layer pineapple upside-down cake and frolic around for you barefoot. <laughs> However, when they took the cake out of the oven this afternoon, the dancer didn't look too good. <laughs> it's too bad, really. He was a rather unusual belly dancer. <laughs> danced on other people's bellies. <laughs> hey, I'm here as a replacement because the show must go on. I don't know why. That's just an old show business saying that the Nielsen ratings proved was a lie. <laughs> Actually, I've never gone along with old sayings. My, I was raised on them. My parents had an old saying cover every situation. It used to drive me nuts. Like when I was a kid, I'd be sitting at the dinner table eating my curds and whey. You know? And my folks would say things. See if you remember this. They'd say things like, now, eat everything on your plate, David, because there are people in Europe starving. Remember that? Yeah. So I would stuff myself with food, you know. And when I finished, I found out that the people in Europe were still starving. <laughs> they hadn't gained an ounce. Now, you should have seen me. Twelve years old, weighed 300 pounds. <laughs> All because of that dumb old saying. And then I became a teenager. And one day, my mother took me aside. Which struck me as odd, because there wasn't anybody around at the time. But that was my mother, you know. She read somewhere that you tell your kids something, you take them aside. That's what she'd do. I, I could be standing in the middle of an empty room, she'd take me over in a corner, tell me something. <laughs> she took me aside. She told me in strictest confidence that a stitch in time saves nine. Well, that's nine to one odds. Who could use that? You know, I tried it four times. It worked, too. Ended up with 36 stitches. And my father would say things to me like, as ye sow, so shall ye reap. You know? So I'd go out and sow. Then I'd get arrested for reap. Usually pick up a few more stitches along the way. Now, even today, I get caught up in these cliché traps, you know, like, like yesterday, I drove past a church, and next door was a laundromat, and there's a sign in the window, and it said, cleanliness is next to godliness. You know, and I said, that makes sense, you know, if you want to be next to godly, you got to be cleanly, right? Can't be dirtly. No. <laughs> so, uh, I, anyway, I gathered up my stretch socks, threw them in one of the washing machines. I don't know what went wrong, but I now own 12 pairs of pantyhose. <laughs> And then this morning I was listening to the radio and the uh, disc jockey said, why don't you start off each day with a smile? And I figured, why not? You know, anything to get it over with. <laughs> so I left the house with a big smile on my face. Some guy walked up, printed a three on my front tooth. <laughs> You can see how eventually you become disillusioned with the old sayings. You know, I used to uh, protest against them in weird ways. Like I'd go out at night, steal old dogs, take them home, teach them new tricks. <laughs> I did that. Or occasionally I'd hang around lending libraries, and when nobody was looking, I'd judge a book by its cover. I'd <laughs> run. You know, they never caught me. Or sometimes I'd sneak up behind people and leap before I looked. <laughs> Don't ever do that makes them vicious. Now, sometimes I'd uh, uh, take some horses out in the middle of a stream, change them. Messy. <laughs> once, once I went out, whacked off a sow's ear, took it home, made a silk purse out of it. <laughs> Gave it to a Jewish girl. You ever do that? Yeah. Well, the point is that the, these days there seems to be a great need for some new old sayings. I have a few that I would like to interject for posterity. How about, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you may live in beautiful downtown Burbank. <laughs> Better to have loved and lost than have to pay child support. <laughs> you can fool all of the people some of the time, and you can fool some of the people all of the time, but Spiro Agnew can't. <laughs> Ask not for whom the bell tolls, lest you be charged person-to-person -person rates. <laughs> and in closing, let me leave you with this one final little thought.